Hello Stampers! Welcome to another episode of Card Play. Today I want to show you how to make this, um, we're going to make the whole card. I specifically want to focus on showing you how to make this faux frosting for this adorable cupcake. Um, I got this technique from Wanda Pettijohn's blog at starlightstamper.com. I've seen it a number of places. She did a really wonderful job of explaining it and now I'd like to show you a video of how to actually make it. So you're going to need a piece of Whisper White cardstock and we're also going to use this little cupcake image from the So Cute stamp set. Um, and you'll notice that I like to put the words on the block separate from the image. This allows me to stamp one or the other without having to worry about taking ink off of different parts of the image. So I have put the cupcake there and we're just going to stamp that cupcake in basic black onto the Whisper White cardstock, just like so. Now what you're going to need, I like to do this technique in a little, this is a yogurt lid, you can use any kind of palette that you'd like, but I'm going to use this little yogurt lid. And we're also going to need a little bit of crystal effects, so we're going to put a blop <laughs> of crystal effects. You don't need a lot because this cupcake is kind of small, so we don't have a big area that we're covering. You're also going to need some clear embossing powder, and we're going to spoon in kind of equal parts clear embossing powder to the amount of um, crystal effects that we put in there. So just kind of sprinkle that on. And we're trying to make a little bit of a sandy, goopy kind of mixture. I don't know how else to describe it, but sandy and goopy kind of works. And we're going to stir that together. I like to use this little wooden skewer. Um, it works well for me both to stir and to actually apply this to the cupcake. So we're going to mix that together. If it gets too thick, you can add a little bit more crystal effects if you want. Um, to get it kind of the right consistency. And the last thing we're going to do is add a color of our choice. I'm going to make some pink pirouette frosting. So just a tiny little droplet of the ink on there will give it plenty of color for this size cupcake. So we're just going to mix that all together. So now I'm actually going to use the same skewer. You could use a toothpick or some other tool of your choice to start to just apply this goop to the cupcake and I like having a pointy kind of instrument to do this with because it helps me get into the edges or into these lines pretty well and you're just going to keep going till you fill in that entire block that you'd like to fill in. And if you have some left over after you finish filling in your cupcake you may want to stamp another cupcake because this won't keep. Um, this will dry out in your lid just because it is crystal effects and crystal effects has a drying period. So I'm going to set that aside. We're now going to take our heat tool and what we're going to do is heat this a number of times. This may be a little difficult to see in the video but I'm hoping you'll be able to. We're going to heat this up until it starts to bubble and then we're going to let it cool a little bit. Then we're going to heat it up, let it bubble again, let it cool, heat it up, let it bubble, let it cool. So I'm going to heat it about three times to get a good effect. So let's get started. And hopefully you can see that it's just now starting to bubble a bit. So I'm going to pull the heat tool away, let it cool just a little bit. And then we're going to go at it with heat again. And it bubbled up and now we're going to let it cool again. And then we're going to do this just one more time, a third time for good luck. Okay, and that's that. So once it cools just a little bit, it's all set to go. You could use your finger to press down um, some of the raised area, but I like to leave it um, kind of crinkly and yummy looking. And what we're going to do now is just color in the rest of our cupcake. And I'm going to use soft suede to color in the wrapper. Okay, and I went ahead and cut out the little cupcake as well. I colored in the cherry with real red and the wrapper with soft suede marker. And we're going to then need three different circle punches. I have a real red one inch circle, an early espresso one and a quarter inch circle, and then a whisper white one and a half inch circle. So I'm going to use a dimensional to pop this cupcake up right onto the real red circle. 
like so. And then I'm actually going to use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue. It's funny, I used to use a lot of 2 way adhesive and snail, and now I find that I use Tombow a lot and use snail or 2 way adhesive very little since I feel that this adheres better and stays longer, and it's also very economical. It's a lot less expensive. You get a lot more mileage out of your glue. And then we're going to use a dimensional to just pop this up into the center of our Whisper White circle. And now we're going to take a piece of three and a half by three and a quarter early espresso cardstock, and we're going to take a stamp. It's from the Bring on the Cake stamp set, and we're going to use this happy birthday image. So we're going to take that on a clear block, and we're also going to take our Versamark ink, and we're going to go ahead and white emboss. So we'll just ink this up and get it as straight as we'd like. And then we're just going to add some white embossing powder and heat emboss. Great, and I also want to add the word cupcake, so happy birthday cupcake. So I have the cupcake greeting on this end of the stamp. So we're going to heat emboss that also. So I'm just going to gently ink that up. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp it here on the card and add some white embossing powder. And we'll just heat emboss that too. Then what we're going to do is take a piece of pink pirouette cardstock. I've already done this in advance. This is three and a quarter by five inches, and I went and ran it through the big shot with the perfect polka dot embossing folder. Um, what we're going to do is just adhere this early espresso panel right to the top and right on top of that pink pirouette panel. And again, to do this, I'm going to use my Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. And then we're just going to lay that down right on top. Great. Now what we're going to do is take a corner rounder. I happen to have this one. You may have a different one. I'm just going to round this top corner and this bottom corner, just like so. And then I am going to take my adhesive again and glue this embellishment down onto the card, just like so. Then we're going to take a piece of Pretty in Pink ribbon. It's a little bit darker than the pink pirouette. And this piece is about 16 inches or so. And we're just going to go ahead and tie a knot. And you're going to do it right over that seam of where your early espresso and pink pirouette paper meet. So just tie that, and then we're just going to knot it. And then we're going to go ahead and just take our ribbon scissors and cut, snip the ends a bit. Like so. And last but not least, we're going to take this entire panel and we're going to place it onto a pink pirouette card base. So this is eight and a half by five and a half, and I just scored it in the middle. And before we actually adhere it, I want to go ahead and just round the top and bottom corners also. And we're going to use dimensionals to go ahead and just adhere that to pretty much the center of the card. And there you have it, a really adorable little card using that faux frosting technique. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Card Play, and I look forward to seeing you again soon here in the craft room.